Hello, welcome to the Pigskin Pete YouTube channel. You are about to enter into the mind of a demented college football fan. Right here now, it's all clear now. I finally found the face to face my fear now. It's crazy, I can't call it. I've been too deep, trying to make rip by the end of these two weeks. I'm sick with the beef, but they call me out of the kills. I got a meeting with the label tonight I got a couple verses floating in my head in case they want me to flow I got a feeling it was strange, it's like a reality show Let's see if I can rap to save my life Now all my gear looks right and my beard looks tight I'ma stare it in the face to see what fear looks like I got my demo in my hand, a flutter in my heart We coming out the dark now, the fun about to start now Good afternoon everybody, Pigskin Pete here Happy Thursday to everybody Today's video was inspired by none other than a subscriber and a uh, contributor to the Pigskin Pete YouTube channel, uh, Ramon Jordan. Uh, there's tons of great storylines in college football this year. Now, I think every year we have a lot. I mean, there's always something going on. There's always new coaching changes and teams that are emerging, teams that are falling off. Uh, I mean, the, the, it's an endless soap opera of different things that are happening. With all these great storylines happening in every single conference this year, in the Pac-12, uh, I consider Justin Herbert deciding to stay at Oregon and the way that they've been recruiting for the past couple years. After the uh, departure of Willie Taggart, uh, Mario Cristobal has really done a, a great job there. He's, he's, he's doing better than Willie Taggart as far as wins and recruiting. And uh, Herbert coming back, I think, is a big, big deal, especially with the state of the Pac-12. Now, they do play in the North division, we have both Washington and Washington State in their uh, division. But I think that Herbert coming back is a huge storyline. In the South, the biggest storyline is Clay Helton and uh, Southern Cal. Because I believe that, that uh, Helton is probably the biggest target, the biggest hot seat coach in America. And I would not be surprised if he got fired after five or six games if they have two or three losses that they shouldn't have had. Um, because really, with the state of the South right now in the Pac-12, USC should have been just destroying everybody, and they haven't been doing that. Now, they've, been, they've won it a couple times, just based on the fact that the rest of the uh, division was so bad, but uh, they haven't really emerged as some sort of a threat to anything. And um, if you're a Southern Cal fan, Southern Cal coach, Southern Cal player, Southern Cal alum, your expectation is to win and be a playoff contender every year. It's not gonna happen every year, but that's your expectation. And they've just been falling massively, massively short. And there's a lot of people that just don't think that, uh, that he's the guy to do it. So uh, as far as the Big 12 goes, the, the most obvious storylines are Oklahoma. They have had two Heisman Trophy winners in a row, three playoff appearances in the playoff era. And they've got you know, pretty much molly whopped every time, except for the game they gave away to Georgia or Georgia came back and won, whichever way you wanna uh, look at that. But uh, with Jalen Hurts going there, it's going to be a different looking style of offense, I think. Uh, I'm not saying he won't pass the ball around because he'll have a better opportunity to do that against the secondaries as a whole in the Big 12. And I also think he's much smarter and older. He's a veteran. Players played in the big games. He's, he's got a lot going for him. And, but I still think that uh, Oklahoma is the team to beat. And I, the question is, how will Jalen Hurts perform? I tend to think he's going to have a great year. It's not going to look the same way it did the past couple of years, you know, with Baker Mayfield and Kyler Murray. That's a different situation. But I still think it's going to be a successful season for Oklahoma, and they are the team to beat, obviously. Uh, Texas is – are they a pretender or are they a contender? I tend to believe that they are a contender, uh, at least in the Big 12. I don't know about playoff or anything like that. But, if, listen, if you can make it to the playoffs, you're a contender, I guess, anyways. But uh, they, they, it's not just because – the way that they ended the season last year, which was impressive, but it's because Oklahoma was a legit playoff team last year, and they beat Oklahoma once in a regular season. Yeah, they lost to them in the championship game, but all they did after, after that was go out and beat uh, one of the top three or four programs in America and Georgia, not only beat them, but beat the crap out of them. And they've been recruiting very well for the past three or four years. And it's always two or three years later once you start recruiting at an extremely high level that you start seeing the fruits of that. And so I think this is going to be a year you're going to see the fruits of that. And they have a veteran quarterback coming back. And uh, I think Texas is going to be good. TCU is a team that last year I had as a dark horse of winning that conference before the season started. It didn't take long getting into the season to realize that that wasn't going to happen. 
But um, I still think TCU is, a, is a, a contender in the Big 12. They could be the dark horse this year. I don't know. But Gary Patterson is a good coach, and I just think that uh, they, they, they're they at least the second or third best defense in the Big 12. They actually do play good defense over there. So that's a big storyline for me is TCU. If you want to move to the SEC, uh, man, there's so much. The SEC speaks for itself. It is the strongest, deepest conference right now from top to bottom. And nobody's going to argue that. Uh, I think that as far as the coaching Stuff goes in the SEC right now. There's not a whole lot of storylines. They had a big coaching turnover a couple of seasons ago, and they're sort of stable at the moment. And then, of course, that's what we've seen this past year in the ACC. Uh, the storylines in the SEC are it's, it's Alabama is the one that everybody's chasing, and there's a couple of teams. And obviously, Georgia's been challenging them, so that's not a, a new thing. This has happened for a past couple of years now. Can they get over that hump? There's Auburn, LSU, Florida. Uh, Tennessee, I guess, is another big storyline. Who is that one team, whether it's going to be Georgia or Auburn or LSU or somebody that's going to take down Alabama and put them out of the picture? I don't know. We'll see. The ACC, in my opinion, is probably the biggest storyline this year. And you're saying you're saying that because you're an ACC homer. You're always defending the ACC. And of course, Clemson is in the ACC. This is completely objective. I'm just talking about the coaching change. This is a new coach in Miami. Uh, the, the coach in Willie Taggart in Florida State, he's not new, but this is his second year, and they're already trying to run him out of there on a rail. They don't improve at all uh, or even get worse somehow, then that, that, that's a huge storyline. There's a ton of pressure on Willie Taggart for a second-year coach, no, no doubt about it, it's, especially since they're loaded with talent still from Jimbo Fisher's recruiting days. Uh, of course, you have Clemson, who is the Alabama um, not only of the ACC, but of the country. The new coach at Georgia Tech, new coach at uh, Louisville. Yeah, Mac Brown at North Carolina, that's a huge one too. So there you go. Uh, the Big Ten, easy, right? Michigan has been just waiting for this to happen. What have they been waiting to happen? They've been waiting for Urban Meyer to have another heart attack or a brain cyst or maybe a hangnail or uh, an infected cut on his arm. I still think Ohio State's going to be really, really, really good, despite the fact that Urban Meyer's not there. All right, let's look at Michigan. So they'll have their second year with Shea Patterson, the uh, former Ole Miss quarterback. Uh, we know their defense is always good. It's one of the better defenses in the country year in, year out. Then there's Penn State. I think Penn State took a step back last year. The departure of a, one of the best players to ever play in college football, in my opinion, and Saquon Barkley. We tend to take a team that's at the top for several years and they have one you know disappointing year and we just write them off and i don't think you can write penn state off i just don't i think they're gonna have a really good team this year there's a couple of other outlying teams like michigan state and possibly even northwestern with hunter johnson coming in there but if you take uh, clemson and alabama out of the picture right i'm gonna put them at tier one let's call this a tier system if you take clemson and alabama out of the picture just forget they even exist it gets much, much more interesting, doesn't it? I mean, who do you have winning the SEC if Alabama's not there? It's easy to say Georgia, but you never know. The ACC's wide open. Hell, you could have uh, Boston College could win the ACC or Miami or somebody, Virginia Tech, Virginia, right, Duke. Um, it's crazy. If you take Clemson out of the picture in the ACC, the, it's, a, uh, it's a bloodbath free-for-all. Uh, if you look at the Big 12, you take, I mean, Oklahoma could be the team that wins the national championship if you took both Clemson and Alabama out of the picture because they've been the most consistent out of all these other conferences outside of uh, the SEC and the ACC. They've been the most consistent at getting to the playoffs and just not winning it. So uh, logic would tell you that, that with Clemson and Alabama out of the picture, they could get their way back into the playoffs and run away with the thing. Ohio State and Michigan, both teams also that could take advantage of that, mostly in the Big Ten and, of course, uh, Oregon, Washington in the, uh, in the Pac-12. So without Clemson and Alabama in the picture, if you're, if you're putting them in tiers, Clemson and Alabama tier one, you got Georgia, uh, Oklahoma, Ohio State, Michigan. Um, maybe you could even put LSU in that category for tier two. And then you go down to the tier three teams who are teams that are sort of trying to break through those teams would be Texas, Florida, Southern Cal, Miami, TCU. 
there's a lot more teams in tier three. It's probably 50 teams in the country that are in that tier three category. So and after you get up tier three, tier four, and tier five, then, you know, it's just, uh, it's just teams that aren't going to have a chance no matter whether Clemson and Alabama are there or if they're not. There's just so much going on um, that, that makes it fun to discuss. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day. Pigskin Pete checking out.